Good afternoon, friends. Welcome to our homestead. I've got a really important message for new homesteaders and maybe some who've been doing it for some time. It's an important warning and I am giving it because I do not want you to quit. I think more people need to leave the city and move out to the country. And I do not want new homesteaders to get discouraged and move back. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I think for the most part, new homesteaders have done their research correctly and they understand that moving out here is a lot of hard, hard work. My channel is dedicated to giving you my experiences and what we have going on right now. And I'm gonna list the things we've got going on right now, things that have gone right and things that have gone wrong. Now, some people are gonna see that as complaining and probably let me know about that in the comment section, but Complaining is the furthest thing from the truth. The reason I'm sharing these things is to help somebody out there who is struggling with the exact same thing. This information is for those who want to listen and need help and need encouragement. And in my honest opinion, I think the homesteading community as a whole needs to kind of step up and be encouraging for those who are just getting into this lifestyle or who have a desire to leave the city and move out. Okay, friends, I've talked about this on my channel before and that's not getting overwhelmed. You can go back and look at about 100 videos I've talked about on that topic. But I don't want you to suffer by death from a thousand paper cuts, if you know what I mean. Basically, what I mean by that is at any one time on a homestead, no matter how big it is, we've got just under eight acres, there will be 100 jobs that need to get done. That is not an exaggeration by any stretch of the means. And when you're first moving out, the jobs are gonna be building and construction and getting things set up. When you're in a situation like us, we've been out here for over eight years, then it's usually repairing things, tending to things, and uh, just maintaining stuff here on the property but stuff can just pop up out of nowhere and break. So let me give you an example from the other morning. Came outside, I was having a friend come over to actually do a job that I haven't done in a few years and take care of it for me, that's a plumbing job. But I came outside that morning to kind of uh, clean up and get things ready for him to come over and we found a hole in the fence where one of my dogs was getting out. So I had to drop everything, cut some cattle panel, repair that fence, and then we had a chicken that died that very morning. So we had to get her out of the coop so you know disease didn't kind of set in, affect the other chickens. Had to bury her and then come up with something to put over that uh, burial site where the dogs won't dig her up because they do that. A friend came over to assess two different plumbing jobs that I have postponed for a long period of time. He was done with this assessment and that was just in time so I could get my girls ready for their piano recital. So got that all that taken care of. By the time we got home, it was almost dark and just fed the livestock and we're done for the night. The reason I'm telling you that is every one of us has family obligations and those certainly should not be overlooked. I homeschool my girls, so that takes up a decent portion of my time. I work from home, so it's a blessing for me to do that, but they've got piano and violin and all this stuff that I've got to take them to. And that's not a complaint, that is a joy for me to do but it eats into the hours of the day, of course. And I know many of you who want to live this lifestyle have a regular job. So it's gonna be late nights. It's gonna be, you know, if you've got livestock who, you know, say you've got sheep and you've got <laughs> assist with the birth, that could come at any time, middle of the night, doesn't matter what it is, you've still gotta to go to work the next day. So for any new homesteaders, keep that in mind. Anything can happen at any time. Prepare yourself mentally ahead of time for stuff like that. But prepare yourself for things to break when you need them to get a job done. Case in point is this power washer. I need it for several jobs on the homestead like right now and the pump's not working. I think I know what it is with this uh, regulator valve and I do wanna film that so that it helps somebody else out as well. And of course that holds up other jobs from getting done. This is a funny one. Right before I was gonna start filming this video and chipping wood, I had a hen fly out of my coop, right at me. I have no idea why. I had thought it had been a short period of time since I clipped their wing feathers. You can see here, here's the feathers from her wings or her primaries on the ends of her wings. So I had to do that. 
but I had a catcher first. I always have a fishing net ready to catch a hen that flies out over the electric fence, but I'd yell at the border collie so he wouldn't eat her. And let me tell you something, sometimes you're gonna spend money and it's a complete wasted trip because the new tire you bought for your handy little dump cart to catch your wood chips, the hub on it is actually too deep. So it won't fit on this cart. And the store is 30 miles away. I certainly can't just jump back in the car, go return these and come back with the other ones. It's gonna take some time. Now you can see my garden is looking pretty good over here this year. I amended the soil, things are looking nice. Potatoes, onions, got melons and squash coming up right now. We've got peas and some broccoli and Chinese cabbage, so on and so forth. But what you don't see is in front of me. And that is this horrible mess that I never got cleaned up for my spring planting season. So honestly, I'm working with only about half of what I can plant in my garden because the other beds are completely destroyed. I've even got weeds growing up on my weed fabric. And the reason this happens is there are folds and creases within that weed fabric if it's not perfectly flat and stapled down on the ground. And then when you get dirt that comes out of the beds or dirt that you know just blows in, weeds will start to root in that and grow down through the fabric. Friends, at any one time, there is a lot to do, but you're gonna have to prioritize on what to do. You can see I've got these fruit trees which were sent to me bare root. And if you haven't seen that video, click the top of the screen. But I had to put them in the pots because I just couldn't get them in the ground. They've been in these pots for over a month and a half. Now that's okay for them and I will get them in this summer, but there were much more pressing things that needed to get done, like seeds going in the garden, transplants going in the garden, the blight and some Pierce's disease. Uh, blight had come onto my pears and Pierce's disease onto my grapes. Things will come up that are priority. So make sure you jump on those first. And all I can say is it won't stop. So you're gonna have to keep a smile on your face all these things are gonna happen all the time and you just gotta deal with it. Sometimes you can put a Band-Aid on things like I've needed to change my uh, seals in my tractor bucket cylinders for four years and I wanna make that video as well, but I just haven't had time. It's a big job, so I just keep putting more hydraulic fluid in the tractor. And then this guy the other day decided to bust out the skirting underneath the bottom of my house and get underneath the house because I don't know were you scared of something what was your deal and he has a giant concrete head and uh, he just smashed through it I was able to throw something in front of it temporarily that he can't get through but <laughs> it's another job I've got to put on the list we'll see how long it takes me to get to it Friends, it's a job. And sometimes, as you know, at any profession, you could have things that come up that are emergencies. You have to take care of those right away. You have to put other things off, but you gotta keep everything shuffled correctly and in an order so you can get to it later. They kind of like each other, but not that much. He's one and she's eight. She doesn't put up with very much at all. So everybody goes through those things in their everyday life. And I'm gonna tell you right now, they are going to be multiplied tenfold out on a country property. But don't give up, stay encouraged and stay positive and keep working through them. And here's my big last point. Do not overwhelm yourself. So you're excited for this new lifestyle, but you still have a job. You're out on your country property. Maybe you're building a house, whatever it is, or you've moved into a new house. You've got a million things you wanna do. Slow down, take it steadily and easily because I've mentioned this before, that is what burns out homesteaders or new homesteaders the most, is getting so overwhelmed that they cannot, uh, or believe they cannot take care of it anymore and they can't get anything done at all. But I'm here to tell you that you can. Think through it, prioritize, don't worry about some things, have friends do other things, like my water heater. I really wanted to do that, but I just haven't had the time. And since he's a plumber, he's better at it than I am. So don't die by a thousand paper cuts on your homestead. And don't let those paper cuts be self-inflicted. Okay, I've rambled on long enough about this and I hope it was helpful. Now it is time for me to chip that entire 
trailer full of branches back there. I hope I can get it done before I've got to make dinner. If you have any comments or questions or need help with anything, please leave that for me in the comment section below the video. Now go check out this video right here, which shows you how we put that wood chipper together and how well it works. Have a beautiful blessed day. See you next time. Bye.